Well, hello. Hope everyone's doing fine and training hard. Now, first one I'm going to touch on again. I've mentioned it before. I get asked all the time. Lee, what do you think about overtraining? I think I'm overtrained, blah, blah, blah. My whole career since I've been 13 years old competing and winning to now, I've always said I don't believe in overtraining. And people are like, oh, there is, Lee. There is such thing. I know because I overtrained. And then I look at these people. I don't know about fucking overtraining. You don't even look like you fucking train one day in your fucking life. So don't talk to me about overtraining when I've been there, I've done it. I've spoke to other people that have the right mindset. Now, mindset's key here. Do I believe you can get tired training? Yes. Do I believe if you train really hard the next day, a couple of days later, you can be tired and feel overtrained? Yes. Only if you're not getting enough rest, you're not getting enough food, you're not getting supplementation, whether it be these type of supplements or anabolic type supplements. So there is overtraining, yes. Only if you're fucking off on all the other things, if you're fucking off on not resting, if you're fucking off on not sleeping, if you're fucking off on not just getting your natural vitamins into you. Don't worry about the anabolic side. Yes, you can. But if you're training your fucking ass off and you are getting your fucking sleep in, you are getting all your nutrition in and your supplements in, you won't fucking overtrain. I've gone weeks and weeks in contest prep without a day off because my meals were on point, my cardio was on point, I was sleeping, I had the supplements, these and the injectable type. And I never fucking overtrained. It's all a state of mind. Your body can take a huge amount of punishment. Like I said, if you're punishing your body every day and then you're not resting and you're not eating and you're skipping meals, of course your body's going to get tired and wear down and you won't be able to give 100% to each workout. It's not because you're overtrained, it's because you're not doing everything else. You can't just do one thing. It's like you can't build a fucking building without a foundation, can you? You can't fucking go and put bricks together without the concrete in between, if you're missing a vital element in anything, things will suffer. So I do not believe in it at all. And now those same people that tell me, the experts, you can overtrain. Of course they'd tell me, the only Mr. Olympia. Tell me you're going to be Mr. Olympia. And the same one trying to look at the profile picture. You haven't even done a local show. You've only been training a year. Whatever in the bodybuilding, I never thought I was going to be Mr. Olympia. I never thought I was going to be a pro. It was other people that told me I had the potential. And this is why I tell people, go to the fucking gym, train hard, eat right, get your rest in. And if it's meant to happen, guess what? It's going to happen. Most people who excel in a certain sport is because they love it, they enjoy doing it, so it's not like they have to do it. And they're doing it because, like I said, they're just having fun. Some of the guys that do golf, like Tiger Woods or basketball. You see it in all sports. Young kids doing things like, man, this guy's going to go far in this sport. He just naturally has it. And it's the same with bodybuilding. And I think that's what's hard for you to understand that, yes, you might go to the gym. Yes, you might eat. Yes, you might rest. Yes, you might take steroids. But in 100 years, you're not going to look like a top professional bodybuilder. You might not ever look like a top amateur. I know guys that eat, train, sleep, take steroids, and they don't even look like they go to the gym. And that's just facts of life. That's just how it is. You know, you can wish in one hand and shit in the other. I know which one's going to fill up first. Like I said, yes, if you love bodybuilding, you love training, that's great. Go and do it. Train hard, eat right. Be consistent day after day, year after year. you got to keep doing it. And if you're meant to be a top bodybuilder, guess what? Just from training hard, eating, resting, you're going to build muscle. Forget steroids, forget anything else. You see more all the time in a gym. Someone comes in and after six months or a year, like, fuck, look at him. Must be on gear. No, he just naturally, body develops quickly. Don't keep saying you're going to be this and be that. Just get in there and train. And like I said, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Look at Hollywood. What do you do? There'll be a waitress or a waiter. Oh, I'm an actor, but I'm just doing this stuff. How many people have gone to Hollywood to be a movie star, gone for all of those things, maybe get a little extra role, maybe get on a game show if they're lucky, one of those stupid reality shows that aren't reality, when they might just, you know, get little bits like that, a commercial, and that's it. But yet then somebody else can be just in the right place at the right time. Like when I did the Hulk thing, I went up there, I was in contest shape, they said, that's what we're looking for, so I got to do all the body work for the Hulk movie, the first one in the video game, because they had all the muscles showing the veins, right place at the right time. I've been mean, other TV shows here in Australia. People have known me and said, hey, Lee, can you come do this? I've never gone to acting school. I've never done that. How many times did Paul Hogan, you know, from Crocodile Dundee, he used to be a fitter on the Sydney Harbour Bridge and paint the bridge. He just went on a talent show once to tell a few silly jokes on the TV show and people loved him and boom, took off. I think Pamela Anderson was picked out of the crowd, wasn't she? There are so many. Harrison Ford, I think he was a carpenter, wasn't he, on the set of some of these things and whoever was meant to be coming in to read for Han Solo or something didn't show up, so he gave it a go. The rest is history. 
there are so many things out there that have been in the right place at the right time, whereas you can do all the homework. There's people that go to college, schools, universities, you get all these degrees. You know, I have friends who have dropped out of high school. You know, it's one of the biggest construction companies here in Newcastle in Australia that doing government work, private work, buildings. Nice guy down the earth, but dropped out of high school with no, no degrees and all this sort of shit stuff. So there's so many people who you think are having educations to end or to be on and being book smart, but being real life smart and just having common knowledge in life, how to get by in life is what, you know, to me in school they should be teaching cooking, which they used to teach, maybe how to do your tax returns, maybe how to budget, basic things like car, where you put the petrol. Some people sadly don't know. Where you put your fluids, water, washer fluids, where you put oil. And how about how to change a tyre? Basic fucking common things that you're going to probably have to use at some point in your life. But today, we're just stuck on phones. We're learning Ivy Bobbity Boo, Super Califrenchalistic, Espialidocious, all this fucking shit. I know in Australia here, kids are going backwards in school. Writing, reading, arithmetic, even just writing, they can't write because they're all on the phones, texting and stuff. So handwriting's almost a thing of the past, isn't it? Can't really remember the last time you got a handwritten letter or something from somebody or a card even now. Not many people send cards like they used to, so... I know I got off on the day about bodybuilding, but yeah. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen, okay? Now, I also get asked a lot about cardio. I still do cardio two, three times a day. Why? Because I've got the time. But I recommend everybody should do at least cardio three times a week minimum. Three to four is good, five even better. And that doesn't have to be crazy going to the gym. Just a lot nice walk. Could be more vigorous doing your housework. Yard work even. As long as you're moving, that is the main thing. Just keep moving. You don't use it, you lose it. It's true. Shit, even if I sit for a while, I get up, I'm like, oh, back in that. But as you walk around, you warm up and you're not so bad. So yes, I think cardio is essential. I never used to do it a lot in the off-season when I was younger. But then I did only because it made my stomach feel better. Keeps your metabolism going. You can eat more foods. I like you don't have to go crazy where I'm not one of these or what's my pulse got to be, what's my pulse going to <laughs> be. No, just nice steady pace. People would ask about cardio. Is it necessary? I would say yes. You're not going because the main people think that is doing cardio, I'm going to burn muscle. Now, again, if you're training right, your nutrition's good, you're taking your supplements, you're not going to burn muscle. You don't have to like stop eating for days and go do like fucking marathon after marathon before you start going catabolic and tearing your muscle down. So just steady cardio off season is not going to affect your muscle mass. Even like if you're training, you don't want to do it beforehand. Once you've done your workout, just do a good 20 minutes straight after. You know, there's like a cool down type thing, but it is good for you, like I said, stomach wise, uh, but to eat more, but even just cardio health wise is good for you. So yes, do that. And now, what else is coming? I've got Valentine's Day coming up, don't we? Well, happy Valentine's Day. Hope you've all had a good one. But with Valentine's Day, why is it that it's always about the women? 